today from Lumen Field in Seattle. It's week 12 of the NFL on EA Sports. Justin Herbert and the Seattle Seahawks versus Gardner Minshew and the Indianapolis Colts. We are just south of Pioneer Square here in the great northwest city of Seattle at newly named Lumen Field, home of the Twelves. Today, it's week 12 of the NFL season, and we've got a good one in store between the Indianapolis Colts and the Seattle Seahawks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at the Seahawks team as they get ready here. The streak continues, doesn't it? They come in a perfect 10-0. And it's not just that they're winning, it's how they're winning. All phases of the game coming together for this team. The final playoff push is upon us. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. And at quarterback from the University of Oregon, it's Justin Herbert. And if you go by the numbers, he's had a Pro Bowl type season. And maybe that's even selling him a little bit short. He's the NFL leader in touchdown passes to this point in the year. And with the end of the season not too far away, he's got his guys playing at a very high level. Here's Walker to start the drive. The numbers for Walker from last week's effort. 13 carries, 59 yards, and a touchdown. When a winning streak stretches this far, you start to wonder if a team is truly unstoppable. And here's a guy who's been very much the legs that have helped drive this team to wins week after week. And even when teams have keyed on him and tried to slow him down, he's still gotten the job done enough to avoid a loss. Talking with him in pregame, though, he thinks that this week could be his biggest week yet. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Walker with another carry. He'll get this up to the 47 and brought down there. So, Charles, you talk about this offense, how well they played. I mean, the defense, too, really. But they're sitting at 10-0 now on the year. 4-0, 5-0, that's nice. But once you start hitting double digits with these wins and no losses, I think the seriousness of the situation, it just has to ramp up. Yeah, when you do say 10-0, it can't scare you as a team. Just think about it this way. For most of the year, they've been playing to win their division and get to the playoffs. Now the playoffs are just about a foregone conclusion. So now they have to down-focus their thoughts about getting home field advantage and finishing unbeaten, and they need to make sure they keep it in that order. Now a man open down the middle of the field, and they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. So after several rushes to start the game, Charles, they go to the air there and get a nice completion. Nice mix-up on the play call, is right? Establish the running game, make the defense think you're going to do it again, and then hit them over the top. Now and he will score! Touchdown, Seattle! Kenneth Walker, his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And the Seahawks get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. 
Well, these guys scored touchdown after touchdown in that win a week ago. So how do they come out this week? Same way. They've got that momentum going, a touchdown on the opening drive. I think it's safe to say that they're in a groove, isn't it? I mean, a lot of times we've seen where teams have scored a ton of points the week before. The very next week, struggle to score almost as if they used it all up. Not in this case. This group appears locked in. We're going to have to make some adjustments if you're on the other side of that football. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. Throwing on first go. down is go. Minshew. Here we go. That's going to be caught by Josh Reynolds. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So from the 36 now, first and 10. First carry now for the former Badger, Jonathan Taylor. And he's across the 40, three extra yards to the 43. The numbers for him from a week ago. 23 carries, 102 yards. Just an excellent performance from them on the ground last week, and that speaks to an offense that is operating at a high level on all fronts. Of course, that man running the ball, he's just seeing the field so... Taking it right down Broadway. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the Colts are able to strike back quickly with an opening touchdown of their own. Santos with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. Scoring summary, three-play drive. Each team's had it, each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And that is incomplete. Nearly intercepted. The free safety couldn't quite get his hands around it, and it brings up third down. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Walker now at first and ten. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. 67 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. They run again with Walker. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber who runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave them with a third and about three to go. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. A play fake and now Herbert to throw. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 29-yard line. Last play they got stuffed at the line. Different story here over 20 yards. Herbert setting up to throw on first down. That's into the hands of his tight end, Will Disley. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. 
These two teams all tied after one. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? And he's able to get it down to the two yard line. They give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. Herbert jet sweep as he taps it forward. And this is not going to do it as he stopped at the two yard line. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on it before he could get much out of it. Patterson. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Only a yard there, so it brings up fourth and goal. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old-school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. It's an old-fashioned goal. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. Noah Finn from a yard out. And the Seahawks' decision to go for it pays off with six points. You got to figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Myers connects on the PAT. And that makes the score 14 to 7. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And Rodgers will hold on to this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. And you know, it's certainly a lot of football left to play. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're in first place in their division, looking really good and looking to be a threat come January. And are you one of those early holiday shoppers, partner? Are you one of those guys get your list done? Because I think about what every team has on their holiday shopping list right now. What's the number one goal? Make the playoffs. Number two, win your division. Number three, and I think the biggest goal of all, try to get the number one seed so you get that first round by and ensure you don't have to go anywhere in January and hopefully get to the Super Bowl that way. This pass complete to Reynolds. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Everyone go four, four down. Mike's 50, Mike's 50. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. 72 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Well, we've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that would look like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. On second down, it's Taylor. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. This drive didn't end well, but if they can keep stringing these together, they'll like what they're doing. That was an eight-play drive before it ended in a fumble. So the takeaway's got to be doing what we want to do and doing it well. Just got to take care of the ball at the end. Now a draw play. It's Walker. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That good for 22 and a first down. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. 
Game clock sitting at 2.02, so they'll get one play before the two-minute warning. Oh, design run for their wideout. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Oh, they'll get this to Metcalf on the jet sweep. And he is down at the 48, a pickup of four that started at one 48-yard line and ended at the other. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Going to throw on third down with Herbert. Looking middle, and that's complete. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 37. It's a 10-yard pickup, and that's enough to move the chains. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. On first down, Justin Herbert. Short throw to Disley. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. First down now. Short throw to Disley. And he's going to get this down near the 25. And quickly they get to the line. To throw again on second down. Herbert targets Metcalf along the sideline. Touchdown! DK Metcalf. 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Seahawks will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half, and that'll give us momentum going into the second half. Give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Extra point up and through by Myers, and it's now 21-7. the touchdown. Here's Myers to boot it away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Well, not much time remains here in this first half. We'll see if they can get something out of this drive, at least a field goal. They could certainly use it down by two scores. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Minshew, first and 10, finds his man over the middle. It's likely. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. From the 45 on second down, Minshew. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 43. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Again, Minshew looking to throw. Targets and finds Reynolds once more. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out and past the halfway point of the season and now past the halfway point of this game. We skip halftime and get right back to the action. Set to begin the third quarter. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. By no means certainly are they out of this contest. Two-score game started the third quarter, but you feel like if they don't get points and then they give up points, then it can become a slippery slope. This feels like an important possession. Yeah, that slope becomes even more slick if you come away empty-handed on this drive because then you give them a chance to extend their lead. You need some kind of points here, even if it's just a field goal. So I call one of those calming drives, try and slow things down a little bit. Not much there. Maybe a couple up to the 35. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try to run for the first with Taylor. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Trailing big, and that looks like what they're trying to do here by pushing the ball downfield. Well, let me go with the heavy cliche then, partner. Just control what you can control right now, and all they can control here is how their final plays develop. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That's into the hands of Reynolds. And the Colts are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Now, fourth quarter, certainly not enough time for a comeback, but nice to see them making use of the time remaining to try and make this one a little more respectable. Yeah, I think the ultimate goal, good execution, be crisp, be sharp, and find a way to put some points on the board to make this thing look just a little bit better. Second down and goal, Minshew. Quick hitter here, it's complete. The catch good for six yards, but now it's third and goal. And that is caught. Well, they're going to see this one at the end. They get a score, but pretty much an exercise in futility right now. Still down big. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that'll cut the lead down a bit to 28. Fielded just outside the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they've got to be feeling very comfortable and confident here with this lead in the football here in the fourth quarter, Charles. And I don't think that they need to score again, but it seems like this offense is just getting better as the game goes on. They scored on their last two drives. Certainly feels like a chance for them to continue to have some fun out there, doesn't it? Game's already decided, as you noted. So they can continue to play loose, break out some other concepts, maybe run a few trick plays, get other people involved. Heck, even go deep on one of these first snaps just because they can. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Now here's Michael Dixon. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Minshew. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. And one of the whistles for a timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. Another try after the first down sack. Minshew got his man complete over the middle. That's Taylor. And now we're going to get a timeout. Somewhat pointlessly called with three seconds to go in a game that's already been decided. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. So the victory here for Seattle. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well... Here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle. Go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them. This one is now planted.